All right, I'm here with uh, Rob Carlton, I icon, legend, perhaps, I don't know. That's for everybody else to decide. Anyway, um, he's stuck. But wait, hey, hey, are you not backing me as an icon or a legend? Mate, well, that's outrageous. Uh, well, hey, icon, yes, legend, um, you're still- hey, You brought it up. You brought yeah, it up. True, you could, true. if you didn't, if you didn't want to back me into that space, you should have never mentioned well, it yourself. Uh, well, hey, listen hey. Here, Farrell. Listen here, we got off on the wrong foot today, my friend. Hopefully, I can. Hopefully, I can win you back. And oh, fingers, fingers crossed. Otherwise, it'll be an ugly Friday morning. Oh gosh, a, a brawl, a brawl with a movie star. I've never ha had one of those. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rob is starring alongside Lisa Kay in Netflix's Sweet River, which is uh, due to be released tomorrow. Um, for those people who are watching this interview who might not have, might not be that too familiar familiar with your work, what are some of the other projects that you've been involved in? Mate, um, obviously, uh, oh, so one other thing I'm, I'm best known for is playing Kerry Packer in ABC's Paper Giants and then subsequently Magazine Wars. Uh, and that was a few years ago now. More recently, I was uh, starring alongside uh, Rebecca Gibney in uh, Wanted, season uh -huh. three, where I played the bad guy, basically chasing her around South Australia with a gun, saying, give me the money, give me the money. Okay. Uh, that ended like so many of my uh, parts do, uh, in, a, in a bloody, horrible mess with bullets flying Oof. through my body in an effort to take the life out of... A, a character I considered to be worthwhile, but the writers considered best to, to shoot dead on a mountain top. Uh, and then over the years, I made my own series, uh, Shand on Pictures, um, uh -huh. which uh, my company produced and I wrote and directed and, uh, and um, made, you know, worked with some extraordinary Australian actors. And, and that was a, a comedy series. And uh, that's actually on ABC iView at the moment. It may have just come out of license on that, but it, it tends to swing around on ABC every now and again. Well, you know, if, if Shandon is still on ABC iView, uh, people, check it out. Um, if you want to see some, uh, some, some of uh, Rob's work, which is a little less chilling than Sweet River. Mm. Hey, um, Moving right along, Sweet River. What what's it about? Um, what can audiences expect from it? Yeah, look, it's a it's a, it's a fascinating film, psychological horror, um, uh, based on Lisa's character, um, and it's uh, uh, it deals with, I guess, the grief and distress of a mother losing a child, uh, and then I guess then the horror elements of you know what might happen should she meet that child again? Um, and this, I guess, uh, uh, friction between really wanting something back and then what happens when you get that back? And is that a release? And is that comforting? Or is that just terrifying? Uh, sort of a, in terms of, you know, what may or may not happen. Sort of a careful, careful what you want because you just might get it. Yeah, that's right. And it's also about a small town. So uh, I play a police officer in this town affected by... Um, these goings on, if you will, Luke, if uh -huh. I can be so bold as to say it like that. Um, and for me, the heart of the film was all of these people desperately honouring grief and honouring the pain others go through and trying to protect these people from more pain. And while we try and protect others from more pain, sometimes we bring more upon ourselves in the end anyway it was sort of the guardian of the secrets of the towns in a way yeah that's right do you mind if i sip my coffee while we chat luke go for where it where are you at with coffee sipping oh um, hey I, I i had my coffee uh earlier this morning but i've got a cup of tea somewhere uh, it's, it's it's out of reach so <laughs> hey uh you know white, white with sugar for your, for your cup, cup of tea or you know is it a Coffee there, or is it black? Black? What do you? It's doing? a, it's a, it's a coffee, a white coffee, no sugar, Luke, no sugar. Okay. Yeah, weaned myself off the sucrose. Oh, yes. Well, that that always, always is a bit of a problem in, in, in when, when you take it to the extremes with sucrose. Mm-hmm. Um, given that uh, 
Sweet River is definitely a bit of a chilling watch. Um, Sorry, what was that? Given that Sweet Sweet River is a bit of a chilling watch, and I, I would personally say not the sort of thing that you'd want to watch too late at night. Uh, are there any uh, moments in the movie that you kind of enjoyed filming? Enjoyed filming? I oh, mate, I enjoyed it all. I enjoyed it all. Working um, alongside Lisa was amazing. She was our leading lady. She was, uh, you know, in just about every scene and absolutely drove the heart and soul of that film. So to watch her turn up day in, day out and, and with that performance. So she's so um, connected to the space when, you know, when someone yells action, um, there's, you know, her presence is, is formidable. So it was really exciting to work with Lisa. Um, and of course, Marty, um, well, my mate Marty Sachs and I had some scenes together. So that was just joyous as always. He's um, an absolute gentleman, a prince of Australian TV, or actually probably more of a king now oh, okay. uh, in his dotage. But Marty has always been the kindest, most generous actor, both on and off set. So that was terrific. And then the whole, um, oh, Genevieve Lemon, of course, was up there too. And, you know, Jen's just got this wealth of experience. So we, there was a lovely ensemble, young, bright things as well. Sam Parsonson was there, who I've admired since I saw his work as a 16-year-old um, years and years ago. So the cast was terrific. But the, the other thing that we loved shooting um, with Sweet River, Luke, was the crew, everyone getting up to Mwilambar. It's a beautiful area on the rivers amongst the cane fields there's something beautiful and eerie and spooky and gorgeously australian uh and then the crew you know it's um you know the budgets aren't big on these sorts of films uh -huh. everyone gets in everyone arrives it's like you're on um you know sort of school camp for adults <laughs> and so uh you're all in that area together you're eating at um you know local restaurants you uh -huh. get a chance to go out with the director or the producers and uh, the crew are amazing. Honestly, look, I could talk forever. Clearly, I am almost am. Um, but it, it, I guess the best fun with that stuff is being on location, being able to dedicate your mind solely to this project, uh, be up there and immerse yourself in it, uh, and then relax and have fun between the words action and cut. <laughs> Well, I, I must admit, um, Justin did, you know, show off the area you, you guys were fi filming in with those tracking shots rather, rather brilliantly. Well, Justin is an extraordinary man, mate. Um, you know, he inspired a lot of us to get up there. The reason I was involved was I'd made a short film with Justin uh, a year or so ago. Very much liked working with him, really liked the feel of the uh -huh. work that he does. Um, and so that was a major reason why, well, a major reason, the reason, you know, I did the film was Justin rang me up and offered me a role and to work with him again, Ashley, the producer is amazing. So uh, J Justin's got an amazing ability to see beauty in, in quite, um, tough subjects, uh, mm -hmm. and, and beauty in, you know, this is a horror film, but I think at its heart is a beautiful kind of aching longing for something better. And Justin has a real ability to capture that, mate. Wow, cool. Um, um, okay, well, then, I, I guess uh, the last question that I really probably should ask you is, do you have, are there any uh, movies or TVs series uh, that you've got coming up that we should know about? Well, mate, oh, look, we've got a couple of things slated for next year, but I can't mention them right now. I'm also developing a couple of shows as well, which we can't mention. So we're in development on a couple of TV series, looking at doing some acting in another one. Uh -huh. uh, and then I've got a one man show, Luke, which um, I was in the middle of doing with COVID. I was touring regional New South Wales, getting uh -huh. ready to bring my one man show into Sydney. And um, then it all came crashing down after the six well episodes. What's the name of the one man show so you know people can know, uh, know to look out for it? Well, at the moment, well, it was called uh, it was called Ritually Confused. Uh -huh. um, I'm not sure if I'm going to go with that name again. It's effectively four short stories that I tell 
um, in, you know, and I take on all the characters of the stories. They're all true. Uh -huh. They're a little bit wrong. Oh, look, um, okay. right. one of them, but they're fun and they're pretty joyous and they're interesting. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. I've just started conversations actually with theaters up here where I'm from up on the central coast. Uh -huh. We'll try and put it in again up here in the regions. Um, and then we'll see if we can uh, swing it around the cities. Uh, actually, and there's another little live show that we've got going on, which I can't mention just yet next year as well. Okay, um, well, you know, I'll to look out high, for. With a high profile person in the uh, crime space. We'll see what happens there. So I've got a, so Luke. Yeah? The short answer to your question, I've got a fair bit going on and not much I could talk about, mate. Oh, well, you know, we're, we're just going to have to watch all, watch all this. Watch all the spaces and keep an eye out, out for it. But the, the yeah, live show sounds very interesting. Mate, i tell you what, here's the deal. We'll, um, when these things come up and I'm allowed to talk about them, I'll send you a message and you can help promote them. All right, sounds good. Uh, one hey, where, are you zooming, where are you Zooming from today, Luke? I'm, from, I'm, I'm based down in Canberra in Belconnen. Oh, gorgeous. I was down there last week. Oh, okay. Well, one last question. Yeah. Yo. One of your big roles that you're known for is uh, Mr. Kerry Parker. Yeah. Anything, you know, any interesting sto stories you can tell? Is there an interesting story you can tell us about Mr. Parker from when, you know, when you were, might have heard from when you were, did Paper Giants? Yeah, a thousand of them. Well, you have you got <laughs> one? <laughs> Oh, dearie me. Man, I can't. No, I'm going to let that one slide only because all the ones that I can think of right now, everybody's heard. Uh huh. And there's a couple of secret ones I'm just not allowed to tell. Oh, okay. Tell. Yes, well. And then, and then the ones hovering in between, I've forgotten which are the ones that I'm not allowed to tell and which are the ones I. So I got amazing access. People, I got very close to a lot of the people that worked with him for 30 years, people that were against him, people that were with him. Uh -huh. um, and um, all I'll say is, rather than any specifics, um, he, was, he was extraordinarily rigorous with his business. He asked question after question after question. Whenever he was... Um, looking at buying a new business, he would, you know, drag the relevant business head from uh, inside his company, CPH, up to the office and he would cross-examine them for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, trying to know the best way possible. And so the way he did that was through speaking. He, he wasn't much of a reader. Um, you know, he had sort of dyslexic type uh, things going on. Uh, uh -huh. He would get, gather all of his information through uh, dialogue and through cross-examination and interrogation um, to the point of driving his subordinates mad. Um, and the reason I mention that is because, you know, there might be some people out there listening that might have trouble with reading or might, you know, might feel that, you know, the normal way of getting information doesn't quite work for them. Um, but, you know, what Kerry proved was that if you were constantly open to asking questions and talking and getting your information that best suits you, then you don't need those other things to be a block for uh -huh. you. So that was a, an interesting thing about Kerry was that he was super, super bright, but in ways that suited him and the other ones he had to, he had to let go. And the only other thing I'd say is that be careful how, how you ask those questions. Cause I think he, um, when he passed, I think he was probably lonelier. Uh, than he would have liked to have been. And, uh -huh. um, you know, you've got to try and keep it neat and not yell at too many people. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you very much for, for your time, Rob. And I hope, hope to hear about that, that live uh, show soon. Yeah, hey, Luke, and thanks a lot for all your support, mate, and your support for the, the movie industry. You know, you're right at it, mate. You, you're constantly, you know, pushing these things around and helping people out and, and interviewing people. and um, you know, we're a, um, we're a small industry, but I think we're a great industry. Yeah. Uh, and so to have people like you as part of it and part of that dialogue, we really appreciate Luke. So thanks so much for your work, mate. Have a good one. Take it easy, fella. Bye.